Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back out here in the second in our cabin series. And I guess the first thing we'll go over in this cabin series is firearms. I had a guy ask me on the very first video if it was only going to be trapping or if it's going to encompass other things like firearms. It's going to encompass everything around the cabin for the most part that we're going to do. It's just going to be day-to-day -day life. But I think we should talk about some of the things that are in the cabin or used within the cabin because everything really needs to be multifunctional just like it is in your personal kit. So if it's something that's in the cabin, it should at least in some way, shape, or form, if possible, have a use when you leave the cabin if you were to leave for a two or three day scout or you were to go out way out on the trap line and have to stay overnight. You should be able to pull things from the cabin to create your kit just like you do from your house, just like you would do from a wall tent where you'd have a large amount of stuff there that you brought in by sled, by ATV, by horseback, or whatever the case may be. And when you walk away, you take certain pieces and parts with you to build your kit. It's no different in a cabin. So what I've done is I've assembled my area that I'm going to use for my firearms locker. And again, we're restricted in Ohio to what types of calibers and gauges we can use for hunting and what types of rounds that we can use for hunting as well, especially with big game or larger game like white-tailed deer. For small game and for varmints like coyotes and hogs that are open season all year long and groundhogs, you're not restricted in any rifle calibers there. You can use anything you want. And for that, I have an H&R Handy Rifle 243 with a Leopold 3-9 scope on it. A vintage scope, a vintage gun. Um, it's probably my favorite longer range type rifle, and this is what I generally use for hunting things like coyote. But I don't use it often because normally when I walk out in the woods, I'm not carrying a rifle like that unless I'm specifically going to hunt for coyote. So the three main guns that I have that I use the majority of the time, obviously my single shot 12 gauge, which we're going to talk about more extensively here in a minute, why I profess the single shot 12 gauge so much. And it's a shame that H&R and NEF are not making these firearms anymore and they're pretty much defunct now. But you can still find these things um, at gun shows, at flea markets, at pawn shops and things like that in the $150 to $160 range. The days of finding these for 100 bucks or less are probably gone. You might get lucky, but they're not difficult to find. We'll talk about chokes and things like that in a few minutes. The other gun that I have here is a 410 single shot H&R 12 gauge or NEF 12 or NEF 410. And the 410 is really a good small game round. It's great for squirrel, it's great for rabbit and things like that. I also have an adapter for this gun and this is important to understand is the adaptability of things. But I have an adapter for this gun from Short Lane Arms that will make it shoot 22 caliber. So, dropped it. So I have an adapter that will shoot 22 caliber from this gun as well. It's just a three inch rifle adapter, but it makes it perfect for a trap line gun. If you don't want to carry a, a dedicated 22 rifle for the trap line, you're carrying like a 22 pistol. This will let, allow you to shoot that 22 ammunition from your 410 single shot as well. And the versatility of that we'll talk about in a little bit more in a few minutes as well. And then I have an H&R single shot bolt action 22 rifle a dedicated small game rifle or trap line rifle but i don't tend to carry this too much on the trap line i tend to carry it more for only hunting small game like squirrel and things like that i'm a big believer in shotguns um, a lot of people profess the 22 for small game hunting but and i think the 22 is a great gun for sport hunting but i think as far as putting food on the table and not worrying about being a great shot, not having a big learning curve to be able to use it. I think shotguns are the king. And when it comes to actually, if I shoot at it, I want to make sure I hit it. I want food on my table. Shotguns are the king for that. So now, up here, I just have a variety of ammunitions for those guns. And of course, the 12 gauge being as versatile as is, just the amount of loads alone that you can buy for the 12 gauge makes it a very versatile gun. You can use anything from eight shot for birds and things like that to you know number four shot for things like geese and turkey and then you have six shot for a small game load double up buck is really not a legal round in ohio to use for deer you have to use 
a single round ball, but you can buy slugs as well. So that versatility alone gives you a lot of range of uses for that single shot 12 gauge. When you combine that with subcaliber adapters and being able to use it as a muzzle loader, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, that gives you even greater variation that you can use because if you're reloading your own shells or you're loading as a muzzle loader, you can download it a little bit and still use six shot for small game loads so you're not blowing squirrels and rabbits to pieces with a 12 gauge at close range if you're hunting and things like that. You can download them a little bit, load a little less shot, a little less powder, make it not as heavy as a charge, and even use six shot for things like birds as well by adding a little more shot and a little less powder to give yourself a better pattern at longer distance. There's lots and lots of things that you can do if you're loading your own shells or if you're muzzle loading that gun. That's why I think the 12 gauge is such a versatile gun. Okay, so back to this 12 gauge rant for just a minute here. Um, you know, the reason I like that 12 gauge is because of its versatility. I have a couple of adapters that I generally keep around for my 12 gauge. One of them is an 8 inch rifle adapter for 22. Again, that allows me to shoot the 22 caliber that shoots from my handgun out of that 12 gauge break open if needs be. If I'm on the trap line and I need a little bit further shot and I don't want to try to do it with a pistol, I can do it with this adapter and it works out fine. The other adapter I usually carry with me or at least have in this cabin is a 12 gauge 209 shotgun primer adapter which turns it into a muzzle loader. And so here's the key with this thing. You can reload 12 gauge shells very easily and I have done videos on that in the past and you can do it with very simple tools. And I generally tend to use black powder when I'm reloading my 12 gauge shells because it's more accessible. You can buy it at Walmart. It works just fine. It does dirty up your gun but it, it's so easy to clean a single shot 12 gauge because it's a through and through barrel. Now all you have to do is pull a swab through there and you're good to go. Um, the thing with this 209 shotgun primer adapter is it basically turns that gun into, like I said, a muzzle loader and allows you to load a shell in the gun by just putting a 209 shotgun primer in the adapter and shoving it in the back just like you were putting an empty shotgun shell in there. And then you load it from the front end. But the fact that you can reload 12 gauge shells, especially high brass shells work the best, but the fact that you can reload those 12 gauge shells makes it very versatile as well. Now, would you want to carry all of this stuff into the woods with you on purpose? Maybe during muzzleloader season, yes, if you're shooting a round ball, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But during normal circumstances, it's easy enough to buy 12 gauge shells. But for the long-term self-reliance aspect or the cabin aspect, it's much easier to store a large amount of primers, a large amount of shot, and a large amount of this type of powder than it may be to get a whole bunch of different types of shells. And that's the key to that, is that with the shot, you have some variability. We'll talk about that right now. So, again, I'm using Pyrodex RS powder to reload or muzzle load my 12 gauge. All right? And I always use six shot. That's what I keep around, six shot. I don't use eight. If I'm going to use this six shot on a heavier load, like I'm trying to hunt turkey or something like that with it, then I will put a load and a half in there of the six shot and a normal load of powder. That way I've got more lead in that pattern for things like turkey that I may be shooting at the distance. The good thing about shot is, shot's difficult to recreate round ball is very very simple if i have a lead ladle to melt that lead into and pour it out of and lead is not that difficult to get there's lots and lots of places that you can find lead and recycle it by melting it down and pouring it into some type of a mold like this square mold ingot mold here then you can keep that on hand or you can take your six shot and you can melt it down and turn it into round ball and that's the key to this whole thing is, if I have the shot, I can always make round ball. It doesn't work the other way around. I can't take a bunch of round balls, melt them down, and try to make shot because that's very difficult to do. But making a round ball is very easy. And you can buy these round ball molds from places like Track of the Wolf. 
And if you've got a modified choke 12 gauge, you're sitting at 71 caliber. So you can decide what you want to do or what you want to buy as far as a round ball mold because they come in lots and lots of different sizes and I'm not going to tell you which one is the best for you because it really depends on whether you're going to patch that ball or not patch that ball. For me, I buy something that's very slightly undersized from 71 caliber and I use a chewed ball mentality because I don't have a rifled barrel in my gun so a patch doesn't really make a lot of difference when it comes to shooting a round ball out of a smooth bore. But a chewed ball of, allows me to not use a patch, use a tight ball, and it gives it friction against the walls of that gun coming out. So I get a straighter flying ball by using chewed ball mentality. And I've done videos on that as well. It's basically taking a very close to size ball to the inside diameter of your gun, 71 caliber in the case of a modified choke, taking that ball and molding it and then roughing the exterior of that ball up with a horse hoof rasp on a stump to give it some knurling very much like a golf ball would have that actually grabs the inside of that barrel when it's coming out of the barrel and it's being shot. So just a couple implements. You can buy these lead ladles very cheap at flea markets and, and antique stores, yard sales, things like that. Again, you can find lead to recycle or you can use shot. And a round ball mold is probably going to be one of the most expensive things that you're going to buy because they're probably about 50 bucks. But it's a one-time buy and you can make as many round balls as you want after that. So the versatility of that alone makes a 12 gauge such a powerful self-reliance gun that I would never ever be without one. Because I can change quick loads in and out if I'm hunting. I can use small game loads and I can carry small game loads or I can carry slugs depending on what I'm doing. And again, minding the laws that you have in your state and the seasonality is important. I can carry a 22 adapter in a sleeve in my shot bag or in my haversack so that if I'm using that gun on the trap line and I need to shoot a 22 out of it, I can. But if I'm hunting small game while I'm out there trapping, which I do oftentimes just to put food on the table, I have that ability as well because I can throw a load of six shot in that gun while I'm walking around, store bought, manufactured ammunition. And then if I come up on something in my trap that I need to put down, it's easy enough to shoot a 22 shell out of that gun if I don't want to use my sidearm to put that animal down. Again, the advantage of this 209 shotgun primer adapter means that I don't necessarily have to load reload shells. But I can reload shells. Again, I've got videos on that. But I can also use this as a muzzle loader. Now, you'll have to check with your Department of Natural Resources, your law enforcement people in your state. I have done that in Jackson County with my guy. And he's told me that during the muzzle loader season, if I'm hunting with my 12 gauge and I'm using a 209 shotgun primer adapter and I have no other shells for that gun on my person, and only what it would take to load that gun with black powder, in other words, powder, wadding, round ball, and those type things, and no finished shells of any kind other than, you know, what I have, no finished shells basically for muzzleloader season. I'm legal to hunt with that in my area of Ohio. Again, you'll have to check that in your area. But that makes that gun not only versatile for shotgun season, it also makes it versatile for muzzleloader season. And then I can use that gun on the trap line to put animals down, and I can hunt small game with it during the season as well. So that 12-gauge shotgun becomes huge to me. That's why it's the main gun in my arsenal, and I just have backups to it basically with the 410, with the 22. And then the only reason, again, I even have a 243 is for long-range coyote hunting, which I very seldom ever do. 99.9% .9 of the time, that 12-gauge and that 12-gauge alone will do everything I need to do, and it will kill any type of game there is in the state of Ohio. Now, the one thing that's probably worth repeating at the end of this video is that the simplicity of maintenance of the single shot 12 gauge is another key element to it. I've done videos in the past where I've taken that 12 gauge apart and cleaned that thing in a creek bed before. It's not difficult to clean. You can take the forearm grip off of that thing with a screwdriver, and 
basically pull the barrel completely off that thing and do whatever you want to clean that barrel, whether it's hot water, creek water, whether it's pulling some type of a cleaning solution through that barrel, but you can basically just drop bank line through there, tie something on the other end of it, and pull it through that barrel like a boar snake, and the simplicity of maintenance of that gun makes it that much more powerful as a self-reliance type firearm. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for part two of this cabin series where we talk about the types of guns that I have. And the other gun that I have that I didn't discuss too much is a 22 caliber wheel gun. I have an H&R and I have a Ruger. I generally carry the Ruger single six as a favor. As a favored gun, the H&R has an extra shot because it has seven shots instead of six. And it's also double action, but it's in mint condition. I try not to beat it up too bad. So I use my Ruger single six where I don't mind beating it up. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.